Welcome to Electra Online. Now for something a little bit more challenging. Here we're given when that y is equal to 12 when x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 27 when x is equal to 3 and we're supposed to come up with the equation of variation. And here we're told that it's the direct variation. So y directly varies with some form of x, but we're not told exactly what form. For example, we could have something in the, in the, uh, that looks like this, y equals k times x. So y is directly related to, or directly varies with x to the first power, or we can have y is equal to k times x squared, so that y varies directly with x squared, or we could have y equals k x cubed, so y varies directly with x cubed. We don't know. We only know that there's direct variation, so x needs to be in the numerator, but it could be x to the first, x to the second, x cubed. Well, which one would it be? So what we're going to do here is we go down the list. We'll start with the first one and see how we would solve the problem. So first of all, again, we need to, value, need to uh, find the value for x, or for k, assuming that we have y is equal to the direct variation of x. Okay, uh, to do that, we plug in the values 12 and 2. So y is equal to 12. That's equal to k times x, which is equal to 2. Divide both sides by 2. We get 6 is equal to k. So we end up with y equals 6 times x. And now we plug in the other two values to see if we get the right equation. So now we have y, which is equal to, we're going to do a check. So y is equal to 27, so 27 is equal to 6 times x, which is equal to 3. And of course, 27 equals 18, and that is of course not true. So therefore, that is not the right equation. So let's try this equation right here. So in this case, we're going to get y, uh, which is equal to uh, 12, is equal to k times x squared. x is equal to 2, so 2 squared. So we have 12 is equal to k times 4, divide both sides by 4, and we get uh, 3 is equal to k. All right, let's plug that into our general equation. So we have y is equal to 3 times x squared, and now we're going to do a check. We're going to plug in the two other values, 27 and 3, and see what we get. So 27 is that equal to 3 times and of course that would be question mark, uh, 3 times 3 squared. So we have 3 squared, which is 9, times 3, which is 27. So 27 is indeed 27. And so therefore, this is the right equation. y equals 3x squared. And that would be the correct direct variation equation. y varies directly as x squared. And of course, 3 is the constant k. Well, just to see what would happen, let's try this equation right here. So again, we plug in 12 and 2, so we have 12 is equal to k times 2 cubed. 2 cubed is 8, so 12 equals k times 8. Divide both sides by 8. Too long here. And so we have 12 divided by 8, which is 3 over 2. So 3 over 2 equals k. So now we found our k for that equation. We have y equals 3 over 2 times x cubed, like this. I guess I didn't have to put the parentheses on. Let's just take them away, like that. And now let's plug in the other values. We do a check. And for y, we put in 27 is equal to 3 over 2 times x, which is 3. Notice we have 3 cubed. 3 cubed is 27 times 3 is 81, so that's a check, is 27 equals to 81 divided by 2. Uh, so that means that 27 is equal to question mark, because we're checking. Uh, 81 divided by 2 is uh, 40.5, and of course, no, that's not the case either. So notice that the first equation, y equals kx, the third equation, y equals kx cubed, does not work, but the second equation, y equals kx squared, where y is directly, directly varies with x squared, does work, and we find the correct value for k, which is equal to 3. And that is how that's done. How do you know that it won't be kx to the 4, kx to the 5? So how do you know, is the question, that it 
not one another equation. For example, what about y equals kx to the fourth or y equals kx to the fifth? And let me add another one. How about could it be y equals k times the square root of x or something like that? And the answer is it could. And so we're going to actually show you some other examples where you can see the trend. But let me at least say over here, let's see the trend. Over here, the left side was bigger than the right side. It wasn't equal, so that wasn't the correct solution. Here, the left side equals the right side, and it was the right solution. Here, the left side is smaller than the right side. So notice that the left side was bigger, here the left side was equal, there the left side was smaller. So you see that you go from the left side being bigger to the left side equals smaller, or from the left side equals smaller to the left side equal bigger, and you want to find the place where they're equal to one another. And so you can see the trend, and if you start deviating more and more, let's say the left side is bigger, the left side is much bigger, the left side is really big, compared to the right side, then you're going the wrong direction, you may need to go in the other direction. So that's kind of a little bit of an insight and we'll show you how to utilize that in the later example. Good question.